Hello and welcome to BFS Wargaming. So today I'm here to um, do a tournament review on the recent um, tournament I went to uh, this weekend just gone was the Glass Hammer Open. Um, so I'm going to tell you um, about how my games went um, and how basically the tournament was in general. So start from the beginning, obviously everyone puts their lists in, matches come out and then literally I think it was two days, so I think it was the Thursday night, the Iron, FA, Iron Hands FAQ dropped. Obviously it dropped first and there was like minimal changes and then about an hour later the second Iron, um, Iron Hand FAQ dropped with lots of changes. So Manny and Dan from Glasshammer then put out um, that they wouldn't be playing the errata so that the basically the changes wouldn't be um, in play for the tournament, which obviously um, then there was a lot of comments, but Tank Roberts from Hellstorm Wargaming, the legend that he is, straight away puts, you know, I'm going to play the rules, the new FAQ rules if I'm allowed, um, because it sort of like invalidates the tournament, and he thought that was what was fair. So I had an Iron Hands um, detachment, and I was... Well on board with that, I was followed up next comment saying, you know, I'll play the new FAQ rules because I think it's the, the fairest thing to do. Also, again, it would invalidate the tournament literally straight afterwards. So then Manny and Dan put all the Iron Hands guys into a chat and everyone agreed that they'll play the new rules. But Manny and Dan then let if you wanted to, if you had any Iron Hands in your list, you could change it, either completely change your list or adjust the list, do whatever you want, submit it that night to then get um, the pairings out for the following night. So um, they did, so everyone agreed, so it was all good. We planned the new rules so people could change their lists. I didn't change mine just because I'd. I didn't really feel the need and I just thought oh, I'll see how it goes with the new Iron Hands. So that was basically it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through my list and tell you what it was. So basically I had two repulsors. So in the Iron Hands Spearhead I had two repulsor executioners. I had a Thunderfire Cannon with the Tech Marine. I had Pharos who obviously lost his 5-up Invon to vehicles. It's only counted to infantry. And um, I had a Phobos Captain. Um, and then every game I'd put Chapter Master on the Phobos Captain to give rerolls to the Repulsors and the Thunderfire. Then the. So I had a battalion with um, Smash Captain on bike, Librarian with Jump Pack, um, three units of five Intercessors with the Assault Bolters, um, so I could. Uh, move and advance and charge and still shoot. And then I had um, Khan on bike with the three Invicta War suits in a Vanguard. I think that was it. So yeah, that was my list. Um, so again, into sorry, I've got a bit of a cold. If I haven't mentioned it already, so I might sound a bit bunged up. So going into day one. Um, I just mentioned as well, I went with a, we had actually a really good weekend. I went with a few guys, um, Mark Pocock, Tom Wybrow, um, my brother Dan, um, Ryan Broderick and Ben Crawford. It was a really, really good weekend. We had a really good laugh. Um, just so in general, it was just overall the weekend was brilliant. So into my first game against uh, a guy called Alex Pritchard-Smith. Really, really nice guy. Um had a great game with him. I can't believe how many fives he rolled. It was it was unbelievable. So I'll go through his list. Just got it here. So he had a master of possession, um, a warpsmith, three units of ten cultists, two defilers, five havocs, four with las cannons, um, pox bringer, stop at your bile piper, spore box scrivener, two units of three nerblins, thirty plague bearers. A Supreme Command Statue of a Chaos Lord, Sorcerer Jump Pack, and a Warpsmith. He then had 424 points of reinforcements, which obviously so he could summon. So, didn't really know 
what was going on. So basically, I got first turn and he deployed really, really defensively, like super defensively, right in this, because it was um, uh, search and destroy, so the two quarters. And he deployed up really far back into his deployment zone, this little square with, with the um, plague bearers. And I obviously had the war suits right up. Um, and then I think he seized the initiative. He did seize the initiative and decided to go first. Which I feel like was probably a mistake. Well, I don't know actually if it was a mistake because he got to buff the defilers. So with the defilers, he was using the master of the session to give it, give them a four up in Vaughn and reroll ones to hit and wound, um, which was cool. They were fairly effective. They were very hard. Well, I found it very very hard to kill them. So basically, it just went. You know, he took out. I think he took out a war suit first turn, um, another one down, quite a few wounds, and then it just sort of went on. Um, I killed some cultists. Um, and then, yeah, basically just, he, he then summoned in another 30 play bearers because he got a good summon. And the game was basically, who could hold this objective in the corner? Because it was really, there was sort of the, the two objectives that were out of your deployment zone. And I was holding one and the other one wasn't being held. And then he did finally get on with the play bearers. Um, and then it was just a battle over them two objectives, basically. And I was pretty much getting kill more every turn. Um, but, oh my God. Because I, I basically, I was just leaving cultists. Like, there was one cultist left. Like, you know, there was some Nurglings. So I was just making sure, like, I could kill... Like, if he got one kill, I'd take out some Nurglings and, like, the, the spare cultist. Or, and then there, were, there was another unit of cultists that I thought, okay, I can take them out, like, a bit later on to get kill more. So it was just, um, yeah, playing that. Because it was the... Um, Four pillars mission, but any unit could hold um, and still score. So, oh, I, I should say how the thing. So you got secondaries. So you have got the eternal war mission, which was the primary. You got the secondaries, which was the ITC secondaries missions, and then you had kill points, which you could score a maximum of six if you got. So it's like a kill point differential. So if you killed five more than your of your opponent's units than they did of yours, then you get five points. So you can go to a maximum of six. So yeah, basically, we got to turn five, it was fairly, it was the only game that didn't go the way, and I purely think this is because how many five ups Alex rolled, it's like five up, feel no, um, five up in Von, five up, feel no pain, just constantly, and um, and then four ups on the defilers, I, I literally killed one defiler, and that was turn five, I think, or turn four, maybe, it was, it was, it was a very durable army, and um, yeah, it was a really cool game. Like I say, Alex was a really nice guy. Um, but I ended up winning. Um, ended up winning. So it's like the ETC scoring system. So I ended up winning 17-3 with the differential. Um, so that was cool. It was a really nice game to start off with. Um, very friendly. Um, yeah, just a really nice experience for the first game on the Glass Hammer Open. Um, so we went into the next game. And I was playing, who was I playing? Let's have a look. I think I was playing Nick. Um, or was that my third game? So I was playing, yeah, Nick Council. So Nick, really nice guy. Spent a lot of time on his list with synergies and everything else. So he, I'll... His was a, like a pure infantry list. So he was playing Imperial Fists. So he had the Phobos Captain. Um, the, he was taking the um, Chapter Master. Rewrite everything trait on him. He had two Chaplains. Primaris Chaplains. He had three. Um, he had two units of five Infiltrators. He had 40... You, four units of ten intercessors with the stalker bolt rifles. He had a devastate five devastate centurions with heavy bolters and the missile launchers. Um, also, two hurricane bolters as well. Um, and then he had thunderfire cannon. 
and a lieutenant. Oh, and three units of three eliminators and an ancient. So loads of troops. Um, so before we started, Nick tells me about the Siege Breaker Cohort stratagem where you can do mortal wounds. Um, now, I lost this game purely on, not purely, because he probably would still would have beat me anyway. So I'm not saying um, this was the reason I lost, but it would have been a better game if I'd known quite how good um, the Siege Broken Cohort strategy was, and that wasn't Nick's fault at all. He did tell me, he explained it. I was ignorant to how good that would be. Um, and I put my repulses out a little bit, I deployed a little bit too aggressively considering I was going second. I should have um, held them back a lot more. And he he got first turn. I, did, I deep struck two Invictor War Suits with the Encirclement Strap. He got first turn, he moved his Centurions out, and then he used the Chaplain plus one to hit, the other one plus one to wound. He then used two of the Centurions to kill one of my repulsors. So he done, I think it was something like nine mortal wounds to the first one and 17 um, saves at minus two. So I was thinking about using Armour of Contempt on that for the mortal wounds, um, but I didn't because I thought I'd save it for the second one. Um, so yeah, that died. And even with the six up feel no pains from Iron Hands. And then the second one, um, he shot with three and it done like a stupid amount of mortal wounds. I, it, it might have only done about 13 mortal wounds or something and then horrendous amounts of saves, so it was it was dead. So yeah, lost them two first turn. Obviously that's 672 points of my army. Um, and I knew I was going to be on the back foot from then on. Me and Nick basically knew that I'd lost the game by then. Um, it was then just if I could claw anything back. So, um, yeah, I, basically I ended up, I got my Smash Captain in. Um, oh no, I oh, moved my Khan and my Smash Captain up to, because he left a, little, left a gap so I could get into the Centurions. Um, the Khan charged, died to Overwatch, so I thought, yeah, I'm not gonna charge the, um, because the sixes are producing extra hits, obviously. And this is all before the new strat, so, Sorry, before the new supplement. So he's doing this before you get the plus one damage. Imagine that with plus one damage. He could have easily... I reckon with six Centurions, three shooting at each one, you could kill two knights quite easily. Especially with the new supplement. 100%. Um, and the way he was doing it with the chaplains and stuff. So, yeah, I basically moved them up. And then I... So with the Smash Caps, and I charged the Eliminators and then consolidated into the Centurions to sort of stop... I'm shooting a bit, got the Invictor War suits in, um, done some, took out the Thunder Fire Cannon. Oh, my Invictor War suit blew up and took out like three characters, which is pretty cool. Um, but it, I, I just didn't do enough. Um, I couldn't do enough. I didn't have enough left with the amount of troops he had and everything. You know, my intercessors died, I didn't do enough. And, um, yeah, he, he just had a really, really good list. It was great, and it's only going to get better with the, the new supplement. Um, and like I said, I would have stood more a chance if maybe I'd managed to hide the um, repulsors from the Centurions, or at least one of them. Um, it might have given me a chance, and then I could have maybe put some firepower into them. But to be honest, I don't think I would have killed... I might have killed a couple, but I definitely wouldn't have killed enough. Um, so with even with the repulsors, because you can then do the only wounding on fours thing, so then my last cannon, destroyer cannon is nowhere near as good. But, there you go. Um, it was, I lost it down to my ignorance, but I'm not sure even if I'd known quite how good the strat was, that I would have still won, because he, he, like I say, he had a really, really good list. It was really cool. And Nick was a really good player as well. Um, so I'm not taking anything away from Nick, like, I think he would have won all day. It was also the mission where it was just like the null zone mission, um, where the, the objective's in the middle, and then you sort of, more troops on the objective, and he had far, far more troops than me, far more models. He was always gonna win that. Um, and also the 
Um, not that it would have mattered to him, but there was the null zone wasn't in effect for the mission, so you didn't lose your invul. Um, but yeah, I, like going into the game, it was it was bad for me anyway. Um, but like I say, I think Nick would have beat me, whatever the weather. So um, yeah, that was game two. So that was a twenty zero loss. So I got a seventeen three win, twenty zero loss. I was um, a bit saddened at this point by the loss, but. You know, it happens, like I say, Nick was a great player. So we went into round three, last game of the day. Everyone was really, really, really tired by this point. It was um, pretty knackering. Um, and I played a guy called, I think his name's Tom. If I can find it. Yeah, Thomas Gould. Really nice guy, um, lovely guy in fact, and we had a really, really good laugh. Um, he had, so he had a LATOC, he was taking three fire prisms. So sorry, he had the, so we start with the HQ, he had the fast seer sky runner and the warlock. He had three fire prisms, four wave serpents, 30 guardians, um, three, three units of 10. He had the Crimson Hunters. Yeah. Three Crimson Hunter Exarchs. And that was his list. So, um, I went first on this game. And I killed nothing. <laughs> I don't think. Um... Oh, I might have killed, I might have killed a wave, oh yeah I did, so, shot some stuff, I had one Invictor War suit on the table, I put two in Deep Strike, um, the Invictor War suit came round, um, and I killed, I think I seized actually, I'm pretty sure I seized, or did I, no I didn't, I just won the roll off, so the Invictor, oh no I didn't, I seized, so, they come out, the Invictor War Suit came around the corner. Um, the Invictor War Suit took out a Wave Serpent with combat and everything. Um, and there was a Warlock in there. The Warlock jumped out. He was fine. And I'd done a couple of wounds to some other vehicles. Nothing major. Um, and that was about it. And then he came up with all of the Flyers. Had the Link Fire Stratagem which took out the War Suit. Three of the flyers killed under my repulsors. Um, and that was about it, I think. Yeah, and then he moved up onto the objectives. So this one was the one with four objectives. Um, is it supply drop and fly have objectives secured? Now, I'm not sure if this is how it was meant to work, but it says fly has objectives secured. And I was assuming that that means that fly, the same as troops, have objectives secured. So if you've got two troops on there and one fly, the two troops would have the objective. But I asked Manny, and Manny said, no, the fly overrules the troops' um, objective secured, which I'm not sure if that's right, but Manny's the TO, so for that tournament, it was right. Um, that was just like a side note, really. Um, so obviously... Everything pretty much in his army, apart from his guardians, had fly. Um, and I had two repulsors with fly, and I think that's about it. Oh, and my um, librarian would jump back. So, I then took out, in my turn, I dropped the two war suits in. I took out two flyers, two Crimson Hunter Exarchs, mainly with the repulsor. Um... I took two wave serpents down to three wounds each with the Khan and the Smash Captain on bike. Um, and that was about it. He took quite a few wounds off one of the war suits in Overwatch. He done like the Auspex scan or um, I can't remember what it's called, Forewarned. He done that strap with um, one of the Fire Prisms and took it down quite a few wounds. Um, so yeah, I mean, Tom was playing well. He was definitely 100% winning by end of turn two. Like, 
up on points. You know, I only turn three. I think he killed then another war suit. Um, some other he killed the Khan and the Smash Captain, and then yeah, basically, I then just managed to. Oh, and then the war, no, the war suit came around. Yeah, he killed one of the war suits, the smash captain and the calm. Then my other war suit came around, killed with some intercessors, killed the wave serpents, 10 guardians jumped out. On this side, killed the wave serpent, 10 guardians jumped out. I'd moved the intercessors up by this point. Then, um, he then, he was scoring more. And then, it, so turn three is where it started to turn. It started like, we started evening out on score. He'd still up, I think, got more secondaries than me. And then from turn three onwards, I just started killing more and he he wasn't taking out the repulsor. And at the end of the game, he said to me, he said, I feel like I've been tabled by one repulsor, um, which it did very much feel like the, the repulsor did a lot of work. Um, and it was really, really good. Um, but obviously, you know, I, I had the Invicta War suit done a lot of work. Um, both Invicta, two of the Invicta War suits done a lot of work. One sort of didn't really do much. Um, you know, the Smash Captain and Calm both took about nine wounds off of each Wave Serpent. Um, the Intercessors were there just holding objectives and just putting a bit of extra fire in, jump into combat when they needed to. Oh, he did do something stupid. He he, he was trying to get Killmore, but he, he charged like... Um, or he's trying to get, he's trying to get something, he's trying to get the objective and something else. Oh no, he needed to get on the objective. So to get more on the objective, he had to charge me. So he charged three intercessors with four guardians and all the guardians died. Um, that was probably the the only real, real hot mistake he made, um, or big mistake he made. That was, um, cause that then gave me that side of the board, um, and I could then put them intercessors into shooting other stuff and, and whatnot. But yeah, really good, good game. It just sort of, he started off, he was winning, you know, right up to turn three. And then, so the first three turns were his and then the last three turns were mine. And I just managed to score more of my secondaries and get more kill points, um, which then gave me the win. So I won that one 16-4. That was the third game. And then the fourth game was... Uh, so the next, that was the end of day one. Um, really good day. I was knackered. There were three and a half hour games, which I think were a little bit too long. I would have liked three hour games um, on chess clocks, the same as the LGT. I think that works very well for the current, for 2,000 points. Um, it makes you, because don't get me wrong, the first game was the only game that I didn't go to turn six. I went to turn five. Um, and to be fair, we probably could have squeezed enough turn out we really wanted to like it would have been very quick but um yeah every other game i finished way before way before the three and a half hours um so yeah i think three hours with a chess clock would be absolutely fine i think um three and a half hours you don't need a chess clock because you're i mean i doubt there was many that didn't finish their games um but it was nice because it was quite relaxed in that way. Chess clock, you're a bit more have to be on the ball. But then if you're playing that longer that day, it's a long day. So I would prefer the three hours. You saved an hour and a half of your day. Would have got because I didn't get back. Well, we didn't leave there until like half eight. So it would have been more like seven, which is you know you got a little bit more of your evening and stuff like that. So day two. We were up against uh, Gene Steeler Cole, a guy called Harris Richards, I believe. Yes, Harris Richards. Uh, really nice guy. He actually, um, I don't know who won the best painting, but he was definitely one of the guys up for it, for his Gene Steeler Cole. It was really nice. So I'm going to read out this uh, Gene Steeler Cole army, let you know what was in it. So we have Acolyte, Icon Ward, Primus, Acolytes with Heavy Rock Saws, Acolytes with Heavy Rock Saws, um, 
acolytes with hand flamers and Clamavus, Sanctus, the Jackal Alphas, the Magus, the Patriarch, more acolytes with hand flamers and demolition charges. Um, it's 13, 14 in that. Um, there was three units, oh no, four units of 10, five units of 10 um, Brood Brothers, and then 10 Amarants, Kenamorph, a Nexus, and then three units of Atlan Jackals, and one unit had the demolition charges. Quite a lot in the army, like loads. So, we, I, he won the roll off, so he chose, because the way it worked is if you win the roll off, you choose which deployment zone you want, and your opponent chooses, um, your opponent chooses whether they want to go first or second before you deploy. So I chose to go second. So he, yeah, I chose to go second. So he went first, moved up, he dropped like, so he had all the blips, he took three of the blips off with that stratagem to put him in deep strike. So he started on the board with like a load of Brew Brothers, the Clamavus, I think it is, no, the Nexus, the guy that gives you the CP back. Um, nine mortars, oh yeah, didn't, did I mention the mortars? Oh no, yeah. And he had nine mortars as well. Um, three units of three. And he had two units of the Jackal Bikes. And that was about all that started on the table. Um, so he moved up. Yeah, I think he took one wound off an Intercessor. I think that was literally... Yeah, he took one wound off an Intercessor. That was all he done. Oh, and he had the guy with the sniper rifle. What is he, Sanctus? Or whichever one he is, the sniper rifle guy. Not the not on the bike, the other one. Locus, whatever he is. Um, so yeah, I then had my war suits right up near, I deployed them right up both near, because he had six mortars on one side of the table, and then he had um, three mortars right on the other side of the table, because it was sort of like the dawn of war um, pointy deployment. I can't remember what it's called. And so my, both my war suits moved up, Killed all the mortars, um, and my repulsors really didn't have anything to fire into. Um, he had some brood brothers that were covering the sanctus, so I couldn't see the brood brothers. Um, so yeah, the Atalan jackals, one unit of Atalan jackals died. My other, some other intercessors that I had over the other side moved up and killed like with shooting and combat, killed like a couple of jackal bikes or maybe one. Um, and that was about it, I think. That was all that happened. It was a bit of a slow starting game. So it was the it was six objectives, the mission, um, and it was the one where at the end of the battle you score points. So you'd have got three victory points for each objective. Um, Harris is a really good player. Um, he then drops in. So this is what I was waiting for, turn two. I knew that I was going to get hit hard on turn two because that's when GNC the Cult come to life. So he drops in a load of flamers with the demolition charges. He kills one unit of intercessors with demolition charges. He kills the other unit of intercessors with flamers. So my screen's gone. He then drops in because you can do the three inch a three inch drop and then shoot straight away. And the Phobos captain wasn't quite. Maybe I should have had him further out. Um, probably should have. But then I feel like there's only a certain amount he can cover, and there was a lot of round the edges. So I think maybe I maybe I did the right thing. I don't know. Um, he then. He made the charge into my repulsor with one unit of acolytes with rock saws with all the buffs, you know, um, not might of heroes because that's the space marine one, but you know the uh, the might whatever it is, and yeah, basically they come in and they destroy the repulsor, um, which wasn't great. I was a little bit concerned at that point. Um, oh, the patriarch was on there as well. The magus had dropped in. Another three characters, like the Icon Warden, and another two that were buffing the Acolytes and stuff. Um, so I then managed to kill 
both units, three units of acolytes, the patriarch, um, three units of acolytes, the patriarch, the magus, and then I took a few wounds off them three characters, like a couple of two of them. Um, and my war suits moved up, I killed some more jackals, killed some brood brothers, um, and I couldn't make the charge because my base was a bit too big to get round between the terrain and the thing, which was a bit crap. Um, and then, so I basically just left that war suit there because it was near one of the objectives, so I just thought I'd take that objective with it and I'd kill the Sanctus the next turn. He then dropped in, oh, he dropped in a Kelomorph and some Brood Brothers as well. That turn, the Kelomorph shot some intercessors, killed a couple um, of my last intercessor squad. I then, he then dropped in the unit of Atlan Jackals with the demolition charges, but he could only get three, because of the Phobos Captain, he could only get three in on the Repulsor. And the other two went in on Khan. Um, he had another unit of Roxor Acolytes. And dropped in some more Brood Brothers over the other side. And I think that was about it. Um, oh, and the Aberrants he dropped in as well, because obviously it was turn three. He dropped them right in the corner out of the way. I then He then wrapped up some of my characters and stuff and... Killed, I think he killed the Khan. He killed the Khan, killed the Smash Captain, probably killed the Librarian. Um, Pharos was still alive. Oh, and I dropped my war suit in the turn before as well. So I then managed to. Kill all the stuff he dropped in, plus all the characters. The, he dropped in the jackal bike as well, killed that. My war suit up the other end, killed all the rest of the Broom Brothers and the Nexus, the CP reroll, the CC, get CP back guy. Um, killed the Locus and yeah, the Atalan Jackal, uh, the Jack, Jackal Alphas. I charged the Kenamorph but didn't kill him. And lost another couple of incest. So I basically had one sergeant left. That sergeant ended up running off to get one of the other objectives. Um, so I was going to, I had one, two, three, four, five of the objectives. He had one. He took the aberrants off the board and then the next turn dropped him in on the Invicta war suit in the corner. He killed the Invicta war suit. The war suit took out about three aberrants with him um, in Overwatch and things. And then, uh, in fact, he survived one round of. Um, the Aberrant's hitting him and he died the following one. Um, probably not very good rolling. And then, yeah, I think that was it. So I basically won the game. 17-3. Uh, and then went into the last round. And I was on Table 9 versus Tank Roberts from Hellstorm Wargaming. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick um, Glass Hammer um, YouTube channel link in the description. So if you want to check them out for the event next year, we'll see do they um, do battle reports and uh, a lot of uh, a lot of competitive battle reports. Also, um, I'll put Hellstorm Wargaming's um, link in the description as well. Hellstorm Wargaming. Um, I only met two of the guys there, Tank and Dan. And they were both really, really nice guys. Um, literally, haven't got enough. Um, like, couldn't big them up enough. They were really, really good guys and uh, really friendly, chatting to everyone. Um, and a credit to to the channel. So, yeah, go down, check them out. Hellstorm War Gaming. They do loads of battle reports, and they're they're, they're funny guys. And um, like I say, really, really nice. So, check them out and. Um, so we'll go to Tank's list. So remember Tank, um, he was had an Iron Hands list at the start and he slightly changed it um, because you're allowed. Um, most of the Iron Hands players changed the list because obviously by playing the new rules, that's a serious... You wouldn't have taken the list they were taking if you'd been playing if the, they were the rules. So he was taking two repulsors, but basically he got rid of the two repulsors and 
change some other stuff. So I'll tell you what he had. He had, he was playing Iron Hand Successors. So he was playing Stealthy and Master Artisan. Stealthy is the plus one cover save. Master Artisan is like the Salamander's reroll. Reroll one to hit, reroll one to wound for each unit. Um, so he had three units of scouts with sniper rifles. Um, he used these really well actually, screened out by war suits. Um, he had Captain with Jump Pack and Thunderhammer Storm Shield. He had Chaplain with Jump Pack with the Relic, whatever it's called. Um, the, the Benediction of Fury basically turns him into like basically a smash captain um, and he had a Centurion Assault Squad mainly with Flamers um, he had some with the he had White Decided I think had Melters and a Hurricane Bolt or the rest had the things where you charge and do mortal wounds he had two Eliminator Squads and a Thunder Fire Cannon. And he had an air wing of three interceptors, Stormhawk interceptors, and two Storm Talon gunships. Now the interceptors are good against fly, the gun the gun the Storm Talons are good against ground units. Um, so obviously you're getting the re-rolls ones for heavy and you move and shoot and don't get the penalty. So the, these uh, flyers are really, really good. So me and Tank rolled off, um, and Tank was like, oh, I think this is going to come down to a lot to who gets the first turn. Um, so it was Dawn of War, which actually doesn't help my list. Dawn of War is actually probably the worst deployment for me in terms of the war suits. Because the war, and obviously it depends on who I'm playing, but the war suits, you can really um, nullify the war suits in that deployment. So anyway, I put the war suits up like like he wasn't going to seize because I thought I've got to take a gamble. I've got to try and get in here and do as much damage as I can. So he deploys well. He uses his scouts to screen me out um, the war suits, and so he rolls. He seized twice in the tournament so far. My heart was going. He rolled. He didn't seize. I was like, thank God. So. Bear in mind, whoever wins this game is probably going to move up, like, you know, get pretty high. So, um, I go first. The war suits don't really do anything. They just move, a couple of them move up. One of them moves back a little bit to stay on the objective, but keeps the Centurions out of, sort of, pretty much out of distance, um, the Centurions. Um, I then... Do I shoot into one of the flyers and do three wounds? I shoot into the other one and another one and do six wounds. That was basically I whiffed quite badly turn one, um, and it hurt. I then tried to kill his thunderfire cannon with mine by shooting twice. It didn't. Um, so my shooting whiffed pretty bad and I didn't do enough. Basically, if I'd killed them two flyers, then. I think there would have been a, I'd have had a very, very good chance. I think it would have, could have turned the game, because I think he probably would have, he would have had enough to then kill one of the repulsors. Um, but then I think, then on my second turn, I could have killed another one or two flyers, and then I don't think he'd have had enough to kill the repulsors, if I'd killed the right flyers. So basically, what happens though, that's my turn, basically. He moves up three flyers, two of the, um, the ground flyers and storm, Talons stay back, um, and they shoot the war suits. He then kills. He kills one of the war suits with all the firepower from the back. He had a dreadnought as well. Oh, we didn't go through tanks. This. Oh, I did. Yeah. Suppress. Oh, he had a suppressor squad, and he had a. Um, he had a, venerable dreadnought. I missed that off the list. Venable Dreadnought, um, which he made into a character so I couldn't shoot it unless it was the closest, which was very good. So then, yeah, he kills one of the repulsors with the three Storm Talons. He kills a war suit with the, uh, sorry, war suit with the Storm Talons, the repulsors with the Storm Hawks, a repulsor with the Storm Hawks. I then um, 
Oh, and then he kills the other another war suit with his smash captain. The, the war suit exploded and then done six mortal wounds to his smash captain. He had five wounds. He died. Um, that was pretty lucky for me. Um, that was probably the best bit of luck I had all game. Though. And then he he moves up. Yeah. So then I um, second turn. I kill one of the gunships and I take another one down to like three wounds remaining. Um, didn't do enough, basically. If I'd killed two of them, maybe I'd have stood a chance. I'd, I'd have, who knows? But anyway, so I killed one, took one down, wounded it. Um, his shooting was really reliable and with the reroll ones and the Salamander reroll. He was really good. He had a really good list. Um, and Tank was a, was a good player. Very good player. Um, he takes out the Thunderfire Cannon as well. Oh, he took that out turn one. So he took out the Repulsor and the Thunderfire Cannon. Um, and this was uh, this had six objectives, and you could score at the end of your turn. And then if you were in your enemy's deployment zone, you could raise the objective for two CP. Uh, for two VP, sorry, victory points. So then he takes out the other Repulsor, turn two, with just two of the um, Stormhawks. Like, he did roll very, very well. Um, he was like, I'm sorry, mate. And I was like, nah, it's, you know. It's the way the dice go sometimes. I was unfortunate he rolled well. And, um, yeah, like, he just, he had a good list. The suppressors dropped in. I had one war suit left. Um, the suppressors sorted that out with along with the storm talons. Um, so turn three came along. Oh, and he moved his chaplain over into the middle of the board to apply some pressure as well. So my smash captain on bike went over, killed his chaplain. Um, he, I basically just thought, well, I'll just see what I can do now. You know, I, I was, I had no vehicles left. I had the car on bike who went out to an objective to claim more. I had some intercessors left and Pharos, the chapter master and the tech marine, like, I, well, I wasn't really doing anything. He'd won by this point. It was then just like, because I was like, ah, oh, I could concede, but I think, like, he was like, oh, well, I'm happy to play on if you're having fun. And I was like, okay, let's play it on, because I didn't want to waste his time. So we, we carried on, and so the Smash Captain kills the chaplain. I then said to him, that Smash Captain is going to tank all of that shooting. And, like, we laughed about it, because clearly there was a lot of shooting. The... Yeah, and then I I did end up taking out another Storm Hawk. So he only had he had the two Storm Talons left and one Storm Hawk. And there was two there was a Storm Talon up the end with the Storm Hawk, and then um there was one Storm Talon down his end near my captain, three suppressors, uh Dreadnought with the Laz Cannons, Eliminators, so he shoots all of that. Suppressors, Storm, um, Storm Talon, Eliminators, and the Dreadnought, and he took me down, and the Thunderfire Cannon, I believe. He took me down to one wound remaining. I rolled a lot of free up in ones, a lot. That was when the rolling started going my well, it went my way then. I'd put um, Kingslayer on his Dreadnought. Because his list was actually really hard to get secondaries against. So I moved up to his Dreadnought with my one wound. Thought I was going to die in Overwatch. Managed to survive. Um, I think he got a Laz Cannon shot through but I saved it. So that was like my heart was going. Not that it really meant anything because he definitely won. But I managed to get three points on King Slough. Didn't actually kill the Dreadnought. It got it down to one wound. And he needed to roll two six ups to keep it alive. And he did. Because I'd done nine wounds. Um, and then the Dreadnought hit me back, killed me. Um, yeah, and then I had, and then it was just, you know, I scored a few extra points, um, but he ended up beating me 19-1. Um, just, just got outdone, you know, like, we, obviously, it's a dice game. If the dice had been the other way around, if, I think the way he had it set up, like, the repulses are really, uh, reliable, usually, with the Chapter Master, and he had some really reliable shooting with the re-roll ones, the Salamander re-roll, and the 
um, for hitting and wounding. So his rolling was really reliable as well. Um, and yeah, he just had a few more guns, I think, and uh, yeah, it beat me. So, but yeah, really, really nice to play tank and meet him. Really good guy. Um, yeah, but that is basically how it ended. I ended up in 32nd place. Um, big well done to Vic Vijay. Uh, or Vic Vijay. Um, he won with, I think it was Raven Guard and maybe Raven Guard and um, Iron Hand successors. Yeah, Raven Garden, Iron Hand successors. So well done to Vic. Um, done really well. Uh, Tom, out of all the guys that we went up with, so Tank ended up finishing 10th. So well done, Tank. Really, really good. Um, Nick, who I lost to in the second game, he ended up finishing 9th. So well done to Nick. Um, Tom, who I went up with, Tom Wybrow, who he actually finished 15th, which is a really, really good result. Um, he took Magnus Mortarian. Shalaxi Hellbane, the Mask of Sinesh, the Mirror, um, Araman, a Demon Prince, and a Sorcerer. I think that was his list. Oh, and some Death Shroud to keep Mortarion alive. Um, and he did really, really well. Um, he came up against, he went 4 and 1. He, he actually lost against an Orc Smasher Gun list. And that appears to be his, his list's weakness is those smasher guns. He's lost to it up three times. He just can't seem to beat it. The smasher guns are obviously really good against Magnus and Mortarin. Um, so, yeah. And then I came 32nd. Um, so, out of about 70... Yeah, out of 70, 30 seconds. So, I was above... I was above um, middle. So, I was in the top half of, of the pack, which I'm pretty happy about. There were some awesome players there, you know, a lot of names that if you're familiar with competitive 40k and the circuits in the UK, there's a lot of um, top names there like Tony Chu who won the LGT, uh, Malik who won Batfield Birmingham. Do you know what I mean? There was there were some really, really good players there um, and I feel like the list done all right. I wasn't going to make some changes, um, but the list done all right. It was good. Um I'm sort of waiting to see what happens with chapter approved and that sort of thing to see where I'm going to go um, with the list and obviously see what comes out in Psychic Awakening and see what comes out next and things like that. But yeah, I'm pretty excited um, for 40k. I'm really glad that they've done the Iron Hands nerf because it was it was overpowered. It was, it was too much, you know. Um, and the only thing I think that because they've done the... the um, they've done the Invon, they've done the Ironstone, and they've done the, uh, what was the other thing they done? Oh, the Librarian. So you can't do it on the, on one, uh, a vehicle that's already been healed. They didn't need to do anything to the double heal stratagem. I think they could have left it. It just means that you have to kill that vehicle, or repulse or whatever, that turn because otherwise it's going to heal six wounds with Pharos and it makes Pharos still makes Pharos very very good for 110 don't get me wrong Pharos is good at now for 110 points 110 points is nothing to get a straight three heal uh, two up ballistic skill on a vehicle and a five up invon for any infantry that are around 110 points is still really 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 good people are going oh it's not worth it now well he's still really good um, the last thing I'll say is um, the Imperial Fist supplement and the Salamander supplement is coming out this weekend. Um, there's obviously some things I think there's like a rule in the Salamander supplement that obviously needs to be FAQ'd um, because I just don't think it's been worded very well. Or they're not, it's not playing probably how GW or people haven't read it how GW thought it was going to be played or whatever. So that will probably be changed. The Iron Hands plus one damage to vehicles is really strong, obviously. Um, and I'm just wondering, the Siege Breaker Cohort um, stratagem, if you don't know, basically what how it works is on a six plus, you can do mortal wounds to vehicles, uh, six plus wound roll. There's something in the Iron Hands supplement where you can get it to a five plus, 
and then the chaplain can give you a plus one to wound as well. So you can get it to a four plus, right? So Nick used the chaplain against me, and he was getting more wounds off on a five plus, and he killed two repulsors with five centurions. If you're getting it off on a four plus, literally two centurions, you'd be able to take out, I reckon you'd be able to take out close to, to a knight with two centurions. With, with the sixes to hit, you know, you're getting sixes, extra hits, and everything else, like, you know, re-rolling as well. They could, you know, I mean, you probably wouldn't risk it, so you'd probably end up doing, putting three into each knight, but three, three centurions with four up more wounds and extra hits on sixes, 100% of killing a knight, 100%. Because you're putting, even if it's putting it onto four up in one, you're doing plus one damage, so you're going to be doing two damage. Like, so he killed a repulsor without the plus one damage with two centurions. So with three centurions plus one damage, you're definitely killing a knight, hundred percent. And you're doing it on getting more wounds on a four plus. That has got to be fixed. Two things they can do is completely take the siege breaker cohort stratagem out of the game. Um, now the supplements I don't think they need it with plus one damage I don't think they need to be doing mortal wounds to vehicles like just FAQ it and take it out or make sure it's an unmodified roll of a six and even with the unmodified roll of a six I still think it might be too strong but I'd be much happier with an unmodified roll of a six um, but even with you know the two if you can get two plus to wound on a knight them centurions with heavy bolters are wounding it on threes re-roll it no, not re-roll it, but you re-roll one as a lieutenant. But the hits, you obviously you get plus one to hit as well as with the other chaplain if you take two. That's some serious firepower, you know? Like, it might be a bit too much. Because they'll also be really good against infantry because it's just a lot of shots. So it's like the ultimate unit. Um, but yeah, that's my thoughts and feelings. So hopefully... Anything that's too... And make sure you email GW about these things if you think they're too strong or if you think you know something's written wrong or whatever else. Um, make them aware of it and at least they can then make a judgment. If they're aware of it, they can make a judgment in the FAQ whether something needs to be changed. Um, I know they've changed a lot of stuff up to this point to do with Vigilus and stratagems and relics and things like that. So they've usually sorted them out, but... Yeah, let's make GW aware of it and hopefully um, we can have a really good, fair, balanced um, game, which is which is what we all want, I think. We want as much balance as possible. So thank you very much for listening. If you got to this point, um, you've done very well because I've been talking for a long time. And I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks. Bye.